Welcome to the Tanner House Museum, located in the historic Tanner District of Aurora, Illinois. I'm Mary Clark Orman, the president of the Aurora Historical Society. This house was built in 1857 by William and Anna Tanner, and later the family donated the house to the Historical Society. Today, we exhibit it as it would have been when they lived here in the late Victorian era, which is to say 1875 to 1900. It's an interesting house, and I invite you inside because another interesting thing happening today, Scott Sherwood is working on some of our portraits. Hello, let's go downstairs. Welcome to the lower level of the Tanner House. Um, this is a workspace and uh, over the last few weeks we've been uh, preparing for a really mega exhibit that we're going to be having at the David L. Pierce Center in downtown Aurora. I've been uh, upgrading and restoring 64 works of art for a portrait exhibit that, we're, that, that uh, is going to be our mega exhibit at the Pierce Center. Um, this is one of, the, one of the objects in the show. This is a recently acquired painting. It's of Marion Tanner Simpson, who was a uh, daughter of, of, uh, of uh, William H. Tanner, uh, who built this house in 1857. Um, so this painting was recently donated to us by a descendant of the Tanners who lives on the East Coast. Um, this painting has a number of problems which can be solved by conservation and restoration. When you approach a restoration project or a conservation project, the attitude that you should have is that each painting is like a person. No two paintings are alike and they should be treated like a person. The other thing in restoration is that a painting always tells you what you can and cannot do to it the painting takes the lead. If you follow that attitude, you'll never uh, damage a painting or do the wrong thing. Um, the first thing you do is uh, you go through an examination process with a painting. You look at it with a uh, ultraviolet light to look for other uh, retouch art. Uh, you look at it under magnification. You document it with photography. Which, are, which is a very useful tool. And then you create a map of the painting, you chart out all the damage, and uh, then make a decision about what needs to be done, thus creating a treatment plan. The treatment plan is really a partnership between you and the customer. They have certain things they would like done to the painting, and then you, based on your examination, know what the painting will let you do or not let you do. And once everybody, you, the conservator, the painting, and the customer are all on the same page, then the process can begin. And the process uh, uh, starts, in this case, with cleaning, with doing tests. And I have about 15 different chemicals that I use. Uh, sometimes I'll use a chemical by itself or create a cocktail. Uh, many times I put it in a, a base that buffers it, uh, much like today, these days, uh, during the COVID-19 crisis, people are putting their alcohol sanitizers in a, in a, like a gel base. Oftentimes I put my cleaning chemical in a gel base just so we're not, you know, hurting the painting. Once the tests are done, uh, and I decide on the, uh, the process and chemical to use, I go ahead and do a cleaning. I use uh, small little cotton swabs that come in different sizes, or I use a cotton ball, and then work through the painting section by section. And my cleaning chart oftentimes will look like this. I uh, document each section I do, and then just work through the painting. Uh, when that is done, 
you know, it, it receives other treatments, touch-up painting or a, or a varnish or whatever. And then many times there's also a frame that needs to be worked on too. This painting does have a frame and I'll be cleaning that up too. So this is just one of the 64 works of art that will be on display at the Pierce Center later this year. We don't have a date yet. Um, and we hope you can come and, and visit with Mar Marion. And, uh, and uh, we hope to see you then. So thank you.